welcome into the Pro Football Chase Podcast. It's Isaac Signs with you. And joining the podcast today is Ohio State wide receiver Austin Mack. Mack finished his four-year college career with 79 receptions, 1,050 yards, and six touchdowns. Now Austin is preparing for the upcoming NFL Draft. Austin, thanks for joining me. How are you doing? Appreciate you got you having me. I'm doing great for uh, what it's worth. I'm just trying to train as best I can, um, get ready for this upcoming draft. Now, Austin, let's go ahead and uh, recap your college career. I saw that you were a consensus four-star recruit. Coming out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, what factors went into you joining the Buckeyes? Uh, I, I kind of broke it down to three things. It was an uh, opportunity to play, um, education, um, and then just the feel, the social life, being around the guys, the coaches, um, and whatnot. Uh, it kind of, you know, was a little family oriented as well. Um, my parents, lived, everybody lives in Fort Wayne. They didn't want me to go too far. Um, but I didn't want to be as close as, you know, South Bend, Indiana, where the Irish are at. So um, I wanted to be able to have a little distance. And and I loved Coach Meyer at the time and, and, and everything about the Buckeyes and ended up going there. Who inspired you to play the game of football? Mm. Um, it'd have to be my mentor, man, uh, Dre Muhammad. Um when I was a kid, it actually was kind of it was kind of cool that you know I really went, didn't grow up as a super sports fan. Uh, my parents loved racing, uh, which was different. But um, you kind of just play sports season to season. Um, by the time I got a little older and I met Dre, he kind of just inspired me in his story to be you know this person that I can be. He kind of instilled in me the belief that I could be someone special um, in this game. Um, and, and he introduced me and showed me a lot of players that play today. Um, and, and then from that, one of my favorite players, Larry Fitzgerald, and so I really wanted to, to be like as I continue in my pursuit into football. Now, you got two passes for 15 yards as a freshman, 24 passes for 343 and two touchdowns in 2017, 26 receptions for 331 and a touchdown in 2018. Then as a senior, you had 27 receptions for 361 yards and a career-high three touchdowns. So, Austin, talk about your evolution through the years in a crowded wide receiver room that has put out plenty of NFL talent. Yeah, man, it was uh, it was difficult. Um, um, as a freshman, I was able to get a lot of experience, um, and I was with a very stacked receiver room, so being able to – learn a lot from older guys and be able to just groom into the culture of Ohio State. Um, it made things a lot easier. Um, as I started to get older, um, under under starting the position, but as a, as a wide out my sophomore year, but not only that, it was getting on special teams and being a, a complete factor, um, you know, for the team, uh, really buying into to what it means to win a game. And we believe that, you know, it always started with special teams. Um, unfortunately, I had an, an injury my junior year, um, which crippled half the season for me. Um, so it was great to see a lot of young guys step up into that position um, for me. Uh, that's when you really saw Chris Olave come onto the scene, and it was amazing. Um, and then going into the senior year, we were just even being loaded and having so much talent. It was it was great to see the competition in the room. It was great to be an older guy, being able to try and lead some of the young guys we had. Um, as you'll see the next couple of years, man, Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, they're going to be amazing. Um, great talents for Ohio State. And being able to just instill a culture that Terry, Paris, and Donnie, um, you know, started. And I was at me, KJ, and Ben were able to just leave behind. So um, it's great to see where the culture started and where it is today um, in that room. And it was great to just be around a lot of good talent. You have a lot of tread on your tires. You know that you did play quite a factor on offense and in special teams, as you just mentioned, but you still have plenty of football ahead of you due to the high amount of talent that Ohio State has had at the wide receiver position. So how do you feel like you're going to be able to benefit from that in the NFL? Um, I'd say uh, um, it's, it, it definitely helps, um, one, being at Ohio State – going against the competition and in the, in the, in the level of preparation that we um, we have to go through. Um, two, uh, being healthy um, and being ready for, for that next level. Um, but also just being able, being a full and complete football player, um, being able to 
you can put me anywhere on, on any teams, but also be a effective um, receiver on anybody's team, be able to you know, play inside or outside. Being at Ohio State, you're able to play with Dwayne Haskins, Justin Fields this past season. We know both of those guys are superb athletes and their ability to make passes in and out of the pocket. How did each of them help elevate yeah. your play? Yeah, um, it's, they're very different. They're very different athletes, very different quarterbacks, and it's kind of cool to see the difference. Um, you find a JT Barrett and a, and a Justin Fields a lot more similar. Right, because they have that the run game element. Um, Dwayne was more just a pack pocket thrower, um, which was great for us receivers. You know, we saw a lot more balls, but it's cool to see the different dynamic. Right, uh, with Dwayne, you didn't really see too many scramble um, plays or you know plays where the play breaks down. He's scrambling back and forth, and then uh, you get a nice little touchdown, a nice little completion. Um, and Justin was able to do that. Uh, he did a lot of, you know, incredible things that I, I don't know how he did it. Um, but he definitely made me, made me a lot better. Um, Dwayne definitely made me a lot better being able to just put balls in your chest wherever you were at, no matter how, how many people you had on you. Um, and I'm excited to see how Justin develops in these next couple of years. Um, cause, cause he was, he was pretty young this past year and he's going to be, man, a freak of nature here coming soon. Talk about the 2019 season and Ohio State's run to the college football playoffs. What was it like playing in one of the biggest stages of D1 football? And Austin, I also saw you had a couple of big-time grabs against Clemson as well. Yeah, um, I mean, that's why you go to Ohio State. That's why you go to any big power five school um, is to play in those big games. I mean, you don't go to Ohio State to play against, you know, the Bowling Greens or the, you know, the, the smaller school Um Games you go to you go to be be able to win the national championship and it was absolutely um, amazing. I mean, everybody dreams of it. You know, the lights, the the hype, the adrenaline. Um, it's all there. Um, I think that I wish we'd be able to pull that one through. Um, but being able to you know your last year being able to go into the college football playoff and being able to accomplish the things that we did three times Big Ten champions. Um, it was it was amazing to end that last year like what we did. Transitioning to off the field, you are the president of Redefining Athletic Standards, which is a student organization you founded. Explain the meaning behind that organization. Right, I'm not the president anymore. Uh, I was able to actually hand that off to you know another guy named Terry Johnson, um, which is awesome to be able to see the legacy get carried on. Um, but you know, Raz. Uh, kind of started as just a small group of guys getting together, having talks. And one day we were just like, let's make this into something bigger. Uh, when we came together, we was able to, you know, form an organization, form everything, get all structured. And we were able to make a lot of impact on campus um, when it comes from meetings about uh, mental health or women or anything. And it was just all for guys. So it was able to be a safe place for conversation. And also, yeah, we'd have a lot of events that are educational. Um, so you kind of want to be able to help the athlete find other passions for them, um, be able to help athletes, you know, have a free space to speak um, and to be able to close the gap between other sports and even the normal student, normal students on campus. Um, there's 60,000 students on at Ohio State, and I'm a firmly believer in you know, life is all about relationships and it's very difficult to be involved on campus or even meet more people because we're so involved with, you know, football in our, in our careers. So I think it was a cool way to be able to close that gap, introduce new other people, find opportunities and whatnot. So I'm definitely excited to, to see where they go. Um, and I hope to eventually be able to, you know, take uh, redefine athletic standards to other universities. It sounds like a great innovative group and hats off to you for running as president during your time at Ohio State. Now, Austin, back to the gridiron. You had an average of 14.3 yards per catch in 2017, 12.7 yards per catch in 2018, and 13.4 average as a senior. So how do you think your big playability will translate to the next level? I think it would be even more enhanced. Um being able to be on the field and be able to make 
a lot of contested catches, being able to just make plays. Uh, that's that's uh, number one. Um, I kind of have a motto that, um, you know, I'm ready for the moment. No matter what my number's called, I'm be able to make those plays. And um, at the next level, I'm very confident being able to do the same thing. You participated in the 2020 Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama, which is an all-star game for the nation's top seniors. How did it benefit you? Oh, man, it was amazing. I was actually very lucky to be able to slip my way into that game. Uh, really, uh, really definitely did appreciate that opportunity. But um, one is being able to just go against the top guys in the country, uh, top seniors, being able to put more film onto the onto, onto tape. Um, because as you said, you know, Ohio State is very loaded. So it was very difficult to have as many plays as you would say somebody that's only running, uh, our team that's only running two or three receivers a game. So we ran six. Um, so it was great to be able to get more film. Um, it was great to be able to compete at a, at a high level against some of the best seniors in the country. Um, it was great to be able to also um, get in front of a lot of coaches and, and teams, be able to get a little – more experience of what it is, what it's like from a professional standpoint before I was able to go to the combine. You were praised for your smooth transitions in and out of break. So what makes you believe that you can run the entire route tree in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, I did it a lot at Ohio State. Um, uh, that's something that I pride off of is my route running, my ability to be able to be a smooth transitioner um, in and out of breaks and be fast and fluent. Um, Coach Hartline, and, you know, when he came into uh, my life, probably I think my freshman year was the first time I met him, and I gravitated towards him like crazy. Um, you know, you, you see a guy like Harline who spent about seven years in the, in the league. Um, he wasn't the, the flashiest guy, but yeah, and you sit there and you wonder how was he able to be in the league for seven years? And it's because he was super efficient and he never dropped the ball. And, and to be able to learn from somebody who was who just got out of the league and who, who's been there um, – Number one thing he always told me, man, was just be as smooth and be as fast and a lot of breaks as you can. And um, that's something I really wanted to fine tune because I, I believe that is, a, that, is a, that is a strength of mine. You were invited to the NFL Combine, and there you posted a 459 40, 31.5 inch vertical, and 117.0 inch broad jump. Talk about your experience in Indianapolis and how content you were with that performance. Um, I think it was a uh, it was a great experience to be able to you know be around a lot of excellence, be in the atmosphere. Um, it was definitely different. Uh, the they had made that uh, this year's combine uh, prime time, um, so we didn't run or do anything until I, I think it was like eight or nine at night, um, which was which was tough. It was very tough, uh, and you could see a lot of people who were there definitely uh, struggling from it. Um, but uh, I enjoyed it. It was a great experience. I definitely wish I had a pro day to be able to maybe redo a couple of times. <laughs> but um, I'm glad from the experience. Uh, and, I'm, you know, God has a plan for everything. So I'm, I'm excited for uh, what's next. Austin, briefly talk about your football IQ and the measures you take in the film room to stay prepared for each of your opponents. Yeah, I mean, that's big. Um Football is, isn't just physical. It's definitely all mental. Um, if you can predict or know what the other team is doing before you even have to, to move, that's a, it's a huge advantage on your part. Um, so, I mean, I definitely spent at least a couple um, hours in the film room prior to each each game. Um, definitely really focus on each corners and, 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 be, and uh, safeties. Um, and then just have a common knowledge of what type of defense each team would run. Um, so then, you know, it'd be a lot easier to see um, pre-snap and then post-snap as a wide out. We know with the COVID-19, a lot of things have been suspended and canceled. So how have you adapted your training schedule to that? And what does your training regimen look like? Yeah, so, uh, you know, with uh, everything going on, um, Indiana had just went on lockdown. Uh, what was it? I believe three weeks ago. I went on to complete lockdown. Um, and... It's all for necessary uh, measurements uh, to be able to go anywhere. Um, thankfully, um, my trainer owns the, the the spot here in Fort Wayne. He he allows uh, us to be able to, or the pro guys to be able to train. So it's a very small group that's able to train and 
and uh, and stay safe while we're in this in this predicament. So um, take precaution to be able to get my workouts in every day um, and stay on top of things. And when it's nice outside, hopefully get outside and run routes or um, stay on top of a lot of skill work. Um, but trying to be as cautious as I can um, for, for my family and for the people that I'm with every day. And lastly, Austin, what do you want NFL teams to know about your willingness to lead, learn, and embrace future challenges? That's a, that's a great question. Um, I definitely say uh, that uh, you know I come from a from a humbling uh, position. Uh, so I've been around a lot of excellence. I've been around a lot of guys who have been very successful. Um, as somebody for me, I'm willing to always learn to grow. Um, never an arrogant guy so i'm always gonna you know hear anybody out but i'm gonna work my ass off each and every day i can play anywhere um, and i'm willing to just do whatever i can for uh for the unit and for the team um i'm a i'm an easy guy to talk to and i'm a great guy to be able to fit into any 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 type of room or atmosphere um so i never would have any issues with any teammates and, and uh definitely a, a mature guy that somebody went with in their room um, so definitely ready to go to work and ready to uh, ready to you know uh, win some games. Austin, it was a pleasure interviewing you on the podcast today, man. I really appreciated the conversations and again commend you on a great college career at Ohio State. Looking forward to seeing you at the next level. So stay safe out there and blessings to you, man. Hey, man, appreciate you. Stay safe as well.